So today we have a very surprising character update. This is the third video I'm making about the mysterious Inquisitor who we're about to see in the Ahsoka show. But this isn't a rumour, it's not from an interview, it's from StarWars.com, the official databank. We finally have some concrete details about this guy's backstory. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's a bit surprising, I didn't expect this. There were theories stating he might be an Inquisitor for Thrawn, but it now turns out this guy is exactly part of the same Inquisitors from back in the day, from the start of the Imperial Reign, after 19 BBY. So he survived a long time, he served Darth Vader, he probably knew the Grand Inquisitor, but who is this person? And I don't want to say he, because they're being very specific to not mention a gender. And this makes me think, is it someone we know? I've already discussed Barisophie in depth, but here is the direct quote from Star Wars's databank. Once an Inquisitor, hunting Jedi for the Empire, the mysterious Maroc now works as a mercenary hired by Morgan Elsbeth to carry out dark deeds. Fully encased in battered battle armor, the warrior still carries a red double-bladed saber with a circular hilt, so he's maintained the same lightsaber all these years. Who is Maroc? Well, an enormous clue might be the fact this person is hired by Morgan Elsbeth, who herself is working for Thrawn and building ships. And given Morgan Elsbeth was after Ahsoka, if Maroc now works as a mercenary, they may have heard Ahsoka Tano is still alive, and that may have called their interest, so there's a double whammy, they're doing it for the money, but also, they may have a personal vendetta. Could it be someone from Ahsoka's past? Inquisitors seem to be a very popular concept with Lucasfilm right now. It was believed that by the time of the original trilogy, all of them had died, but it turns out some survived. But how did they do that? Did they go into hiding? How did they survive Darth Vader's wrath? Because at the end of the day, they were just disposable. Maybe it's someone who was a backup Inquisitor, a clone of one of the ones we know. Maybe a clone of the Grand Inquisitor. Or maybe some kind of secret apprentice to Darth Vader. What are the implications of him surviving? Does it change our perception of the original trilogy? I wonder what this guy was up to during the OT. And now post Return of the Jedi, are we going to get his identity unveiled? Now this is something that Dave Filoni has certainly flirted with before, the Inquisitors have become a major part of the Star Wars mythos, and along with a lot of writers he's not wanted to give a clear answer whether any survived. Following the events of Revenge of the Sith, the Empire set out to eradicate all Jedi, and we now know about 13 different Inquisitors, even getting a new mysterious unnamed one in Tales of the Jedi. Reva defecting and surviving the Obi-Wan show also means she would have been around at the same time as well, although now post Return of the Jedi, we don't know where she is. I think it's very unlikely Maroc is Reva. Or could Maroc be part of something mysterious in the Force? In the comic Star Wars The Destiny Path, the Grand Inquisitor, although dead, faced Luke Skywalker in the form of a spirit because Vader trapped the Grand Inquisitor at an old Jedi outpost. Could they do the same thing in this show? I'm gonna say a categorical no, simply because the databank implies this person's been around for a while and now they're working as a mercenary, so they're very much a physical, real-life being, not a spirit. I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I reflect on the Clone Wars, I think it might be Barasofi. To be honest with you, I think we're meant to be scratching our heads. They're not going to give anything away. And Ahsoka is now 23 days away. In order for him to be alive, he must have been a good duelist, or very good at hiding. I'm fascinated by this character. And look, I've seen arguments that say, the more Inquisitors we get, the more survivors of the Great Jedi Purge, of Order 66 that we get, the more their importance is diluted. I disagree. There are a lot of Jedi to begin with, and so therefore a lot of survivors, and a lot of those that were given the choice. Join the Empire, survive for a while, hunt down the Jedi, or die on the spot. And so many took this chance, so the more Inquisitors Inquisitors we find out about, the more interesting they are. And given the Ahsoka show is continuing the legacy of Star Wars Rebels, it makes complete sense that they have Inquisitors in it, because they really started in a big way in Rebels. It began with the Grand Inquisitor, and oh boy, he was menacing in that show. You can say what you want about the animation style, he was an absolute demon. But at the same time rather elegant, well-spoken, a fantastic vocal performance by Jason Isaacs. Could you imagine if Maroc is a clone of the Grand Inquisitor? And you might say that's a ridiculous theory, but Palpatine did a lot of cloning. I'm sure they had backup Inquisitors. And not to mention what Thrawn might have done with cloning. Bear in mind in the expanded universe, he was doing a lot on Mount Tantis. Now that Palpatine is gone, and most of the Empire is gone, and the remnants remain, did he clone one of the best assassins? Unless, as I say, Maroc is revealed to be someone we know. Someone like Barris. 
the thing about the Inquisitors, and I think I'm quoting Dave Filoni here, is that even the more human-esque ones are still very creaturely. There is a tragic nature to them, and they're always desperate and yearning for Darth Vader's approval, but they know in the end they're gonna die. They're seeking temporary approval, hoping maybe one day they'll survive. But none of them did, or at least we thought none of them did. Maroc survived. And why has this guy got a name? Most of them didn't, but there are some exceptions. We have Reva, Iskatakaris, Tualanya Luna. The funniest thing about Ahsoka is that I'm almost as excited for the new characters as I am for the ones we know. Dave Filoni knows how to craft a blooming good story, and he also knows how to write some very intriguing bad guys. There are a lot of them in this show, and there's a reason he brought this guy in. I can't see it being for nothing. If you're gonna have a survivor of Order 66 who becomes an Inquisitor and survives into the post-return of the Jedi Galaxy, you better have a really good reason for why that is. And I can see him as a connecting point. It's all about the assignment hunting down Jedi, and this goes back to what I was saying about the sadness that lives within them, because for the most part, with the exception now of Maroc and Reva, they're not going to live to see a better day, they're never going to be respected, they're never going to be Sith. They're an underling, and that's what makes Maroc so interesting. Does that individual count themselves lucky after Palpatine died, after Vader was gone, and who were they during the Clone Wars? They don't adhere to the Sith religion, the Sith rules, the Bane rule of two. It's all about the task at hand by tapping into the dark side. And a lot of that, as Yoda said, came from fear and anger. You think if you survived Order 66, you would turn over to the dark side, that you would immediately just be obedient? I don't think that was that easy. And we see that with Reva's choice. And I wonder how many Inquisitors had the same motivations that she did. Revenge. Now, they also updated the databanks for Balin, Shin, and Morgan Elsbeth, and they confirm that Morgan was in prison after Ahsoka beat her in Mando Season 2, and that's who Balin and Shin are breaking out at the start of the trailer. And just one final thing for Marok. How do we know this person is human? They're a humanoid, they have two legs and two arms, but you never know what's under the helmet. It might not be human at all. If it's Barasophie, she's a Mary Allen. And a lot of the time in Star Wars, as fans, we look at some species and we say, well, why isn't there a Jedi of this species? Or why isn't there a Sith? Or imagine if there was an evil Sith Lord who was a Hammerhead, an Ithorian. And I feel like that's the place Dave Filoni came from when he made the Grand Inquisitor. And I'm curious to know what other species they thought of when designing him. Powan was right, because Powans, first introduced in Revenge of the Sith, had a graceful nature to them, the way they were presented. Obi-Wan arrives on Utapau, he's greeted, they bow, they've got these red robes, and they use that design, the long heads, the creepy teeth and the eyes, and they turn it into an Inquisitor. When the Inquisitor showed up, you know it was a significant moment in the show, you knew there was trouble. And I hope they make that distinction between Balin, Shin, and this new mysterious Inquisitor in Ahsoka. I hope when Maroc shows up, you know something's about to go down. I'm just so fascinated to learn why Morgan Elspeth hired him, but why is Maroc interested? He must know Ahsoka was once part of the Jedi Order and walked away. But what do you guys think? Share your thoughts on this and everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, my dear friends, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, but have a fantastic day no matter where you are in this galaxy. May the Force be with you, always.